In a minute, I will roll a video I cut from a recent live Twitch stream in which I applied simplification techniques I often used for complicated chord progressions on a well-known jazz standard called Like Someone in Love. After the stream was finished, somebody remarked in my Discord that it would be nice to maybe start some kind of improv settings where people would upload their own improvisations based on my simplification techniques that I will show in the video. I thought it was a good idea, so I made a new channel in my Discord and I provided the PDFs that you see in the Twitch stream for downloads in the announcement channel there. So if you want to participate or just download those PDFs, then join my Discord. There will be a link for that in the description and in a pinned comment. Let's roll the video and I hope you will enjoy it. I made one video where I said, it's a short, where I said that the, the third and the sixth degree do not really exist, they are just substitutes of the first degree. So if we're in the key of C, there will be E minor 7 and A minor 7, they're just C. Not in the sense that if you play chords or you comp someone that you have to play C, but in the sense that if you improvise on it, it is, you're better off just thinking about the one chord. And then I also said the two chords the same as the four chords, and then the five chords the same as the seven chord, which means there are only three chords or three functions, one, four, and five, or one, two, and five. In jazz, one, two, and five. And um, somebody, or uh, several people said, well, that maybe works in gypsy jazz with the easy tunes, but if you go to like bebop or like regular jazz, that doesn't work. So I was like, you know what? Let's try that. Let's, let's try that a theory and see if it's really the case. So I took a song that I have never played in a gypsy jazz. I actually never played it on guitar. I only played it on violin a long time ago when I went to like normal jam sessions. It's called uh, Like Someone in Love. It's a great tune. I recorded the backing track today and uh, I didn't really practice it yet. I uh, I just played a little of the, the melody to find the melody on the guitar and uh, I'm going to practice it today and I'm going to share with you my thoughts on simplifying everything, tricks I use, and I'm going to approach it like a gypsy jazz player. So that means that I'm going to find ways to be able to still play what I would normally play. Of course, my playing is already a little bit in the middle of gypsy jazz and bebop, but I always think like a gypsy jazz player. And what do I mean by that? With that, I mean that I try to find the easiest route through the progressions. And... I didn't come up with this idea myself. Uh, there's several instances in uh, my work practice that I got that idea. And one of them, I, I can remember two now. Two, uh, both of them with uh, the Dutch Sinti. So one was with Stochelo Rosenberg. When I started playing with the Rosenberg trio, I was really bad. I, I, was, I sucked, basically. Not in the sense that I didn't know the tunes or I didn't know how jazz worked. I knew all of that, right? I... I was uh, in command of the theory. I came from arranging and I knew everything. But when I started playing with the Rosenberg trio, I discovered that I sucked. Not because of the lack of knowledge, but just because I couldn't flow like Stochelo could, especially not in the tempos they were playing. And th that made me really practice and change my whole approach to improv improvisation. So everything I'm saying always like with the ear training and the theory, it's because... The Sinti don't really care about any of that. They only care about if you can play. <laughs> if they, they count to four and they play tune, if you can actually play something. And they don't, they don't really, they don't care how you got to that stage. So uh, singing or, you know, maybe you were juggling and uh, you were hit by lightning and all the lines came out. They don't care. They also don't teach any of that stuff that way. They just teach you lines. If you go to a lesson with Stochelo or Paulus Schaefer or Moses Rosenberg, or anyone, they will just teach you lines. They will say, okay, um, let's work on... Uh, let's work on night and day. So on the first chords, just play this. And they make you copy it, and they go very slow. They 
they never ask you to sing it. They were just, no, 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 no other fret. They were just born like that, this fret. And uh, they don't know the note name, so they wouldn't say that. They, they don't know the theory behind it. They just know this great line. And then once you can play it, they say, okay, now play it. Uh, I play rhythm and you play that line. <laughs> That's how they teach. So when, I, when seeing that, I discovered, okay, you know, this is actually a very precise, convenient, practical way to teach someone to improvise. Because the point is not that you always play that line. The point is that you have something there that sounds good. And until you find something else that sounds good, you just play that one thing that sounds good. And uh, in, in time, you will find like five things that sound good and you start making combinations of those five things. That's basically just learning licks, right? But if you see the Sinti teach, you understand why it works. And if you're not used to it, it might seem kind of weird that people are teaching like that. And you might ask them questions like, but you know, uh, you're playing the C-sharp diminished, but the chords that you have diminished, that doesn't mean anything to them. And that's very refreshing because now you're stuck. You just have to do what they show you. <laughs> and you just have to do that. That's the only thing you can, you can do and you want to do it because you hear them play and it sounds great, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, but no, yeah, Gian, that's what happened when I took online lessons with Wawa Adler. He just taught me lines. Yes, exactly. And that's the only thing they do. Okay, so I remember in the beginning stages, I, I was really in love with that uh, Roseburg Trio Life at North Sea Jazz album. That's one of the greatest Gypsy Jazz albums or jazz albums ever made. It's like perfect guitar playing. It's uh, one hour, 15 minutes, something like that, with perfect guitar playing. Like there's no higher level of guitar playing, I think, than you can hear there. That's like, it's, it's like magic. But one tune on that album is um, Seger Zodaj, or um, what's the English title? It's, what's the English title? Something with love. No more love, no more... No more sadness? No, I don't know. Thank you, no more blues. Gian always has the information. No more blues. And I really love that tune, and uh, I learned it from the album. I mean, uh, I didn't play guitar, but I just learned the, how the way they played it. And on one of those gigs, I said to Stockholm, man, we should play that tune. I said, sure, um, yeah, let's do it. He said, do you, know, do you know the original chords, by the way? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, because I, I figured out the chords from the original um, some original recording. I don't remember which one. Maybe it's a Shobimo uh, recording. And I showed him those chords. I don't remember now. And he's like, oh, that's interesting. But isn't that the same what we're doing? And he was doing something completely different. But then I was thinking about it. said, yeah, it is the same. It's just a gypsy jazz variant of it. So it's the shapes that they're used to. But it's basically the same things. So that was one of the first light bulbs that went off in my head. And then another thing happened with Paul Schaefer like two years ago, we were playing a festival and then another band that was playing the festival asked both me and Paulus, or Paulus and me, to join their set as special guests. And they wanted us to play one of their own tunes, which is a really weird tune with all kinds of inversions. I don't even remember, it's very weird. I've never seen that progression before. But I did, um, so we rehearsed that and we had to play a solo and I, my solo was okay, but Paulus was, struggling a little bit, which I'm not used to Paulus struggling. He's, a, he's, a, he's also a perfect player. And then backstage he said, man, those chords are very weird. Isn't there another way to play it? And then I sat down with the guitar and I was thinking, I said, yeah, you, you could just do, and I just played like three, like the normal chords. I figured out how that would go by simplifying. It's like, is that it? He said, yeah, yeah, that's it, that it would work. And then he played perfect solo during the concert. But when he was comping, he still played all those weird uh, chords. But in his solo, he had this simple progression in his head and he played great stuff. So there was another kind of real life situation where I saw the simplification just really working. So I was like, okay, I'm going to um, show you how that would go with a, a complicated tune. One of the tunes that somebody told me that you can do that with that tune. Now my theory is you can do this with every tune as long as it's Western functional harmony, right? So it means basically that there is a key or there, there could be several keys, but that you can always say, oh, this part is in this key. And the chords in that part are either chords that belong to the normal degrees. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or it's a chord that goes to one of those degrees 
or it is several chords to, that go to that degree. So for an example, if we take rhythm changes, we talk to the bridge, the bridge is D7, right? G7, C7, F7. All those chords are not in the key of B flat, except the last chord, the last chord is F7. But now we take all the other chords and you see they go to the next chord. It's a fourth relationship, that's what I mean. Like when I talk about chords that go to another chord, I'm talking about a fifth down or a fourth up. So D7 goes a fourth up to G7, goes a fourth up to C7, goes a fourth up to F7, that's part of B flat. All right, so I'm talking about tunes that have those chords. So either it's on the degrees or it's part of a, a dominant chain or, an, or any other chain that goes directly to a chord that's part of the degree. So it doesn't work with a tune like Beatrice, right? Or a tune like Infant Eyes, when shorter tune, or The Sorcerer by Herbie Hancock, because those tunes are modal in the sense that every chord creates its own sound. It doesn't necessarily go to the next chord. Sometimes there are um, functional parts in the tune. Like a, if you take, think about the blues, like a blues in F, that F7 is the one chord, but it's not really a one chord. It's just a sound on its own. You would call that a maybe a Mixolydian sound or like a pentatonic sound. But then, in the end, if you go to bebop, they play C minor 7, F7, B flat 7. So that C minor F7 that is functional, but the B flat 7 then, the fourth degree, but it's not really the fourth degree, is another like sound on its own. That's why playing on the blues is very different than playing on uh, uh, autumn leaves. So I took this tune called, let me get the, let's look at the chords once. Yeah, so this is a backing track I recorded today. And um, as you can see, there are lots of chords. Let, let me play the backing track once so you can hear the progression. Go to a different key, A. It sounds great in Egyptian jazz, right? <laughs> Is it loud enough? I think so. Yeah. We'll go to A very quickly. Now there's the diminished chord. So in jazz, this tune is known as a tricky tune. But I'm going to show you that it's not as tricky as you think. There's still some tricky parts, but it's mostly remembering that it goes to A major. That's, that's the thing you have to remember. It goes to F and then to A major. But for the rest, it's pretty easy. So let's look at this progression and then talk about simplifications that I would immediately implement. So those first four bars, there's way too many chords. To, to a, uh, for a gypsy jazz improviser, but I would say for any improviser to be comfortable. So that second bar, A minor, remember, six degree is just one. So what I'm actually looking at here is two bars of C. Okay, there's an E7, but that's just a passing chord. It's also on the third beat. It's just two bars of C major. I'm gonna test if it works later. Then we have this D7 with an F sharp in the bass. Some people play F sharp half diminished. <laughs> And then it's F diminished. Some people play F7. Doesn't really matter. That bar for me would be G7. It would actually be D7, G7, because F sharp with a D in the bass. That would just be D7. And then F diminished is just an inversion of G7. So that bar would be D7, G7. Remember, G7 is part of the key. It would be 5. And the D7 is a chord that goes to G7. And we know that progression because it's in... Jangology, right? The only thing is it's one bar. We have one bar where those two cards, chords are present. But there's a trick for that. Then we have E minus 7, A7. E minus 7 is the third degree, so that's just C. So now we can see that the third to fourth bar is actually basically just D7, G7, C. And then there's the A7. Let's forget about the A7 for now. So on the first four bars, I should be able to play C major 7 or C. Then the third bar, I should be able to play G7 or D7, G7. But here's the trick. If you want to skip a chord because it's inconvenient, 
just start playing the next chord after beat one. So let's say I want to make a third bar just G7, and uh, I'll play, just play this. So it's a uh, B diminished arpeggio, and I start with a G, three, four, one. I start after beat one, so I can skip the D7 and just think G7, two C. So let me play, uh, let me play the first four bar. No, let, 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 let's continue. Okay, so I'm gonna play the same lick every time to make it very clear. So I, I'll play this on the first two bars. Just a C major seven, and it's a standard gypsy jazz phrase. In the, in the third bar, I skip the first beat, or I don't play in the first beat, and I'll play three, four, one. Uh, G7 to C. Second line, it's a two, five, one to C, so it's basically G7 again, so I can play a G7. Something like that. Then we have a quick two, five to F, so I play. And then we have a quick two, five to A, so I play. And then we have A minor 7, D7, D minor G7. Again, my simplification is just skip all the two chords. So it's two bars of D7, two bars of G7, so I play. So let's do that. I cannot play with the backing track on YouTube, as you know, because um, then there will be delay with the microphone here. So what I'm going to do is, actually, what I did is, I opened this. Let me... Yeah. So here's my simplification. I'm going to write it down so you can see it. So we start with two bars of C. Then here I'm going to play G7. And then to C. Well, to C6, C6. Then here I'm just going to play G7. And then we're going to go to C6. And then here we're going to go C7. And then we're going to go to F. Man, this is an easy tune. And then we're going to play E7 to A. A6. Uh, on A6 I'll play um, something like that. Or maybe, yeah, I play them. Of lower maybe yeah and then here I play D7 we could actually play a jungle lick there maybe let's play a jungle lick on those last four bars let's play a jungle lick so uh, what would jungle play on D7 to G7 let's do so three four mm. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. So we're gonna play a solo. I'll keep this open. And let me do the Can you hear the backing track like this? It's, it's from a speaker here. Can you hear it? I mean, you can hear that these are the changes. Uh, this this is actually what um, the song is. All those other chords are just passing chords, and you can skip all of them. You can also play them. Maybe we'll do some of it later. But this is just uh, what the tune is, the first half. Let's do one more time. I play exactly like this, like the same 
framework. Let's let's finish the let's finish the tune, right? Second half would be the same. So we get uh, C6 and then we get G7 here. And we're gonna build it out, we're gonna make it more complicated later. C6 and then this is all the same G7 C6 uh, C7 that's all the same chords now it changed a little bit uh, let's look at the um, original changes so here we get uh, that F chord 2 5 2 8 is the same and then we get this diminished chord D sharp diminished and then we get this quick two fives, E minor, A7, D minor, G7. So, here's the simplification for that. The D sharp diminished, you have to play some kind of diminished thing. Well, diminished licks are easy. Uh, it's something we do in Gypsy Jazz all the time. Uh, think about... Uh, it's that chord, that chord is it. So it's B7. So just think B7 altered. So what you're going to do there is play B7 altered to E minor. Well, e minor is the third degree, that's C, right? So we're going to play B7 altered to C, or D sharp diminished to C, if you want to do that, or F sharp diminished, one of those diminished arpeggios. And then D minor G7, A7 we skip. D minor G7, that's G7 again. So let's go back to our simplification. Uh, yeah, so but you cannot see the whole thing, that's too bad. Can I make it smaller? No, I can't. You have to, I just have to scroll. Uh, so we just have to remember that I do that. So here we're going to go to F6, right? That's the same. And then we have E7 to A. Now we have this B7 altered thing. So B7 to C, and then G7 to C, G7. Um, okay, so I'll keep it like this. Now you can see the top line that you can see in the screen is actually uh, the beginning of the second half. But the first half is so similar. Uh, the only thing that you're missing now is, uh, or maybe you can actually see, if I just scroll down a little, maybe you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So now you see on the top line, you see um, the D7, G7. That's the, the last four bars, the first half. So I'm going to play again this very uh, simple solo, but now you can hear the second half. And you can hear that B diminished. I play. Okay, here we go. Jungle lick. Second half. One. F to A B altered G7 Okay, so this is my skeleton. I think Barry Harris also does something like this, but with like other stuff, of course. In jazz, Gypsy Jazz, we basically do it with diminished arpeggios. This is the uh, skeleton. Now let's improvise a little bit with this skeleton, not going too far away, but I'll, I'll, 
I, I'll still use the same skeleton, but I won't play the same diminished phrase all the time. Here we go. There you go. Um, that's that's actually the tune, right? So now, this is if you want to be really basic about it and you want to sound like a gypsy jazz player, this is what you do. And um, as you can see, all the chords here are either one, five. Actually, it's only one and five, right? There's not even a, a two chord here. Okay, so now let's make it a little bit more interesting. I want to add a little bit of stuff. So now we play G7 in the third bar. But it would be nice, actually, to maybe play a little bit of the D7. Uh, so, this change, or... It's the same as Djangology. If, if it would be two bars, everything it would be... So... Right? But... The problem is it's half bar, so we have to be quicker, just... Now that C that we play would be nice to actually go to a C sharp for that A7 that's in the last bar. So we, we, we play something like... Or maybe octave higher. Hmm. So let's add that in the solo. So let's put that put it in the sheet, uh, in the uh, tab. So we're gonna add here on the top line. We're gonna add here. We're gonna add D7, and then we'll put a G7 there. So this would be gone, and then. Let's put a little A7 there, like a little cheeky A7. And there's several ways we could do the A7. We could just play, uh, maybe, we could play something, or we could play uh, a diminished pattern. So, now the chains are like this. Let's play solo. I'm just gonna literally play. Here we go.
it again. Ah. But uh, that works. So let's add something else. Um, I was already a little bit doing it, but let's make this G7. So now we're gonna build stuff out. Let's let's do let's make here an F minor. Why? Because Django likes to play F minor six on G7. So we get that sound, right? Let's add that. Let's do something more. Let's add... Um, so you see what I'm doing now. I simplified the changes and now I'm going to add stuff, but based on Gypsy Jazz principles. So I want to do something more. Let's What, what could we do? Um, you know what? Let's do here. We're going to play. So the original chord here is B minus 7. Remember that, but I'm going to make a very different... I'm going to do F7 to E7. That's something we do in Gypsy Jazz a lot, like, for instance, uh, Joseph Joseph. So we could play something like... Uh, so that's C minus 6. I have to play like triplets because it's fast. But, uh, think about it. I have to have six notes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five... Yeah, so I have to start before the beat. Three, four. That's what I have to do. Okay, let, what else can we do? Let's play some chords. Let's do... Here I'm going to do in the D7. I am going to play this kind of sound. That's what, what Stochler would like to do. It's just an augmented sound. So let's make that D7 plus or something. D7 sharp 11, I'm going to call it. I'm gonna very, play a very specific sharp 11 lick. I'm gonna play this lick. Typical Stocha lick. And then here I wanna play some chords. I'm gonna play some augmented chords. I don't have to write it down, but I'm gonna do. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
That's how you uh, simplify a tune like this.